Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ladies Beyond Flying, another special guest speaker presentation on sustainable aircraft recycling. My name is Daniel Stecher, Vice President, Allen Operations, IBS Software. I'm the facilitator moderator here, and it's a big pleasure to have you all with us today. Uh, I'm happy that I could win uh, Swin Daniel Köchler from North American Aerospace Industries to give us more insights about this very vocal topic of sustainable aircraft recycling. So the stage is yours. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, depends on which part of the world you are. My name is Sven Daniel Köchler. I'm 50 years old, married, three kids. That's usually how you start an introduction. And um, so um, we are North American Aerospace Industries by now the only company that is able to recycle plane 100%. That's a big honor to be here and uh, make a presentation about our capabilities. Um, I'm trying to share the screen right now. So we have a small introduction. Then we are um, going to show you the services offered, the challenges of recycling, um, what can be recycled from an aircraft, which alternatives are there for recycling the materials, um, then, of course, we do have a proof of concept, so we show a little bit what we have done already in the past and um, how we do dismantling and recycle the aircraft and dismantling recycling options, um, what can be uh, recycled. There is different uh, aircraft types that we are working with, the advantages we have against the competitors. And at the end, we uh, have the contact details of me, so if there is any questions, feel free um, to contact me or through um, Daniel as well. So I suggest that uh, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand feature in Teams and then I will cut in, yeah. uh, in Sven's presentation. Yeah, yeah, very presentation. good idea. Yeah. Okay, uh, a brief introduction about ourselves. We started back in 2017 with uh, looking a little bit more deeper into aircraft recycling. Um, in the beginning, as we all know, uh, typical boneyards as they exist means um, there's companies that park the planes on the long term and then they remove uh, the value parts piece by piece, uh, uh, as we call it, cherry picking and leave the, the bones behind. And that's of course something that's not really environmental friendly and that's not um, the way we think in uh, the 20th century, 21st century um, recycling should work. There is better examples to do so. Um, to my excuse, I'm German. So we are, I, was born, I was born in the 70s and since then we recycle everything. So I'm used to recycle whatever we have in the household. So that's uh, why when we saw the boneyards, um, we started thinking why are these parts left behind and what is the what are the options to get them these planes removed in environmental friendly um, not as landfill or waste to energy or whatever so we started into um, the first uh, dismantling in uh, 2019 where we started in the united states with a few dead bodies lying around at some airports especially in Miami executive where we did some Antonov, some old uh, AN24, AN12. And um, so after a while we um, dived a little bit deeper. So we found there is a lot of more than just uh, commercial planes. We do have typical uh, military. We do have um, helicopters. So that's the, uh, we do have uh, general aviation, business aviation, regional jets. So there's a, a wide variety of actually what is in the market for recycling or actually for end of life uh, solutions. Um, as I said in the beginning, there is a lot of uh, companies that simply park their planes somewhere and um, leave them there. That's one of the typical things you see, for example, in the Middle East or in Africa. There is uh, currently an auction going on in uh, uh, Congo where they um, sold roughly 100 dead planes from Cessna to 737, um, everything 
um, everything you can imagine, everything that was flying before was parked there and just parked there for 20 years or more, abandoned. And um, so the typical things, um, what usually go back into the cycle are the components of the aircraft, which are, of course, the engines, APU, um, landing gears, and other stuff. Um, the general challenges of recycling. The uh, generation of aircraft being recycled nowadays, um, actually, they haven't been re uh, um, designed with end of life um, in mind. It's a bit different from what we have right now than from what we had in the past. Uh, there, we all know there is a, a lot of uh, new materials in there, composite materials and plastics and carbon fiber and all this stuff. So no one really thought about um, recycling them uh, just since a couple of years, I would say. Um, the OEMs are looking into recycling the aircraft because they are forced to. Um, at this time, um, it's estimated that um, 80 to 85 percent of the aircraft uh, can be recycled. Um, we have to look into the aircraft itself, what actually is in there. So in general, we do have two different types of, uh, I would say, parts that we, um, that we uh, segregate. We do have the parts from the outside, which are with the older planes that are due for recycling now somewhere in the boneyards, mostly aluminum, titanium, and other metals. So that's, that's an easy task to segregate them, cut them down, segregate them, and get them back into the circular economy. On the other hand, we do have everything that's inside. It means all the different types of plastic that are in there. And a little bit later um, in this short presentation, I'm uh, going to show you what's, what's our solution for that. Um, we spend a lot of money and efforts to find a solution there. It's uh, on, on the next two pages. So in general, the um, as I said, the material distribution from the um, from the metals are it's it's very easy the titanium and everything that's that's the easy task the the carbon fiber and everything is uh, a little bit harder so now we are coming to the interior as i said that's the hard part in recycling that's why we um um partnered with era it's aircraft interior recycling association which is at this time the only company that is able to recycle the interior 100 percent and they are based in the UK. I'm pretty sure um, everyone heard of them already. Um, they are in the red cabin. Um, they do interesting stuff with the Safran, Kydex, Boltron, um, Ricaro, and everyone. So um, we are 50% stakeholder in there. Uh, so they cover all the um, all the interior, like floors, ceilings, sidewall panels, overhead storage bins. Um, ship sets of passenger seats. Um, as you can see here, the, the screens are the, the uh, very different, uh, very difficult to recycle. Um, we got the windows, all other plastic parts, uh, carpets, curtains, um, everything that's in there. Um, so what can be recycled? We do have uh, the different types from the interior here that we do recycle. Uh, one, one of the unique things is that we can do the carbon fiber and the different plastics that are from, from the in, inside of the, of the aircraft. Uh, we segregate them and um, then we put them back into the circular economy. We do have here some alternative uh, uses for metallic, non-metallic non materials, um, like we have the plastics from the seats, the brackets, piping. Um, we can use it for underground piping, bricks, electrical, condol, various brackets, um, return to no OEMs. That's one of the major parts um, that makes it difficult at the moment to use the, the recycled materials, right? especially the plastics from inside because in general, we cannot put them back into the aircraft. So we need to have alternate uses for these plastics. We do have the seat covers. We do have the carpet. Um, we have the seats itself, the cushions. These are things that can be recycled. As you can see here down there, that's the fiber. Um, 
we can do aluminum alloys and all the stuff. So this is this is my this is the fun part here. That's the examples that we did already, especially from from the seat covers. Um, we did some stuff with uh, the seat covers, some shoes. We did some bags. Um, one of them was here with the Lufthansa seats. We upcycled them with uh, Nike. We have here um, American Airlines with uh, a shoe and bag set. Um, that's the typical things we do. But on the other hand, um, we have a broad network of partners that we work with, especially when it comes to PET and other recycling uh, from, from inside. So some of the of the things we did in the past was the Echo Park in Taiwan, um, in Taipei City. Um, we did some hotels, interior design, Skylane in Bangkok, uh, typical uh, Nike Lab Global, um, which means in the Nike tier one stores, we did the interior by recycled plastic. The process for dismantle and recycle is, um, of course, first one, remove the rotable components and in a clean and close environment, then catalog and scan photos of removed parts um, and the certification and back to birth history. Then we do the eco-friendly um, collection and draining of harmful liquids. We know there is a lot of them in the plane, not only from the lavatory, but also from, from other parts, all the hydraulics and uh, the plane never arrives at the airport empty. So we got uh, a lot of jet fuel sitting there, and of course the sump in the tank, all this needs to be removed and uh, recycled. There is different special com companies that help us with that. And um, at the end, we do the end of life together with the local governments um, in a green and sustainable, uh, sustainable way. Um, interesting wise, uh, UAE is the only country in the world where you're not allowed to landfill any part of the plane. So everything that's related to aviation cannot be landfilled. And that's what that's, uh, uh, I mean, they're very, very much forward in, in, in this topic, I would say, um, um, before all the other companies, uh, all the other countries. Someone here from UAE? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Sharina, um, I uh, work in the UAE. Good. I'm I'm resident of UAE, so uh, I'm very <laughs> proud of our proud nations. We're going to have the 50th anniversary very yes. soon. We recently uh, released some new laws. Um, very good. Very very forwarding. Um, it's a it's a pleasure to live there. Um, it's it's a privilege to live there. I lived there since 2008. I saw all the development. I love it. It's it's a great country, really. <laughs> so you're working for which company? I work for Emirates. Emirates, oh, my favorite airline. Very good. <laughs> we um, spoke to Emirates um, two years back already. No, one and a half years back. And about the A380s that were due for recycling. Unfortunately, you did it with Falcon, not with us. But yeah. at least you copied what we what we proposed to you with the uh, recycling, and uh, so I, it's uh, it's a very very uh, smart move. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it the A3, the first A380 is being um, recycled and upcycled. Yes. Yeah. Right. We did uh, we did a plane right next to it, which was the MD11 in DWC, where we had 98.5% uh, recycling rate. Okay. So, That's I, I was watching. I was I was watching the progress in the three um, eighties every day. It's very good. Very good work. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm just saying. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It was. It, it. I mean, we we saw it from 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 the neighboring plot. I would say, and uh, so. The MRO, of course, the MRO Emirates is the world-class MRO. They are above OEM standards, so we know how they work. Um, they did an excellent job. I think the management was also with um, Emirates MRO. Um, very good. I mean, they did it very good. Um, well, very well thought, um, thought after, and um, in a in a perfect way. 
The only thing that that of course is is the biggest issue with the A380 is the carcass, um, because of the composite materials used in there. What to do with it? So cut it down and then landfill it is not an option. So you have to find some solutions for that as well. But I know Emirates is always ahead of um, of the competition. Well, good well, good job. Well done. Next time, maybe with us. You never know. <laughs> All the best. <laughs> Inshallah. Okay. Um, so here is a little bit an overview where we where we come and where we go, where where how the whole process works, and um, I think. We are all in, in, in aviation, so I don't have to explain that too much. I did it in, in the beginning. The plane is just coming into the airport. Um, we, um, we dry it out. We take out all the liquids. Um, we put it into the hangar, then we remove the value parts, um, give it back into the service, uh, in, into the MRO, or um, give it back to the customer. It depends how, how, how he wants it. And then we start with the, I would say, tear down by taking off tail sections, wings, typical stuff. And then at the end, we cut everything up, um, cut it into pieces and put it back into circular economy. So um, I think we can we can share the presentation later with all the participants here in an email. Would that be OK? Daniel? Absolutely OK. I think uh, that's a good proposition. OK. So um, the advantages we have um, is, of course, um, the, the lower parking costs, so no long-term storage. Um, we um, recycle everything 100%. Um, we have a capaci capacity of up to uh, 70 aircraft a year um, with all the um, facilities we have around the world, which is right now one in North Carolina, one in uh, United Arab Emirates and Ras al Khaimah. And another one coming soon in the Philippines in Clark at the airport, where we start, I think, in Q1 and 22. And um, yeah. The customer advantage, of course, is um, that we have a high value in the spare parts. Um, we generate additional revenue for them from the recycled materials um, as it is from um, the metals, composites, as it be from the engines, spare parts, or if we um, do a corporate program like the shoes or bags, we can they can distribute that back to their clients later on um, in, in their shops or stores. So that's the key personal, we have Ronnie, who's the chief marketing officer. He's also a German guy. So there's not too much to say about it. He's very straightforward, typical German. We do have uh, Donald. He's the chief technical officer. He's a long-term um, MRO guy, 25 years experience. So he knows everything about um, how to remove, um, how, to, how to treat planes the right way, I would say. And we do have Martin. He's also the MRO manager. He's like 30 years in, in the aviation industry, he worked with all the big companies. And um, these are the companies we work with at the moment. Unfortunately, not Emirates, but there is a, there is a spot here for Emirates. We reserved it for next time. And that's me. That's the contact details. Um, so if there is any questions about um, certain processes, I would say, um, then I would appreciate if you would send an email um, across or just call and um, we can go more into details for that. Daniel, can you go back to the uh, customer uh, overview? Mm, yeah, if you tell me how that's possible. I think just go um, um, up with the arrow twice and then you should be on the page. Hmm. No. You can see it? No. OK, I can go myself. Uh, so um, I, do you know whether, for example, Delta or American Airlines or Singapore Airlines, Korean um, are offering parts which have been recycled as a new 
um, say, a giveaway or um, something which a customer can can buy in a in a shop from them, or are they just recycling it and giving it again to the industry for for further deployment? So at this time, uh, the companies we work together with, um, they take out the especially. I, I mean, I think you're referring to um, shoes and bags and stuff like that. Anything, it's, you know, uh, you can um, design everything out of the material. You just need yeah. to be very creative. Yeah. And yeah, on the exactly. one hand, we have we have second hand, a uh, second hand, um, um, let's say, sportswear or, or fashion. So why not have second second hand um, aircraft recycled stuff for something which can be uh, interior um, shoes, as you mentioned, uniforms, everything. Yeah? And that would be interesting because I've never seen it somewhere in the world so far. Uh -huh. uh, there is just a limited uh, number of companies that are offering that so far. And usually it's third party companies that do aircraft furniture and stuff like that. It's not it's not the airline or the lesser or the owner itself. They simply want to get rid of as soon as possible to minimize their costs costs. And um, maybe in the next step, we are working on on a few things. Next year, we're going to have some surprises, most probably. And which of these customers is maybe then the most advanced in terms of rethinking, uh, recycling of, of aircraft components? Is there a role model for the industry? At, at the moment, I would say Emirates, Etihad and Singapore. These are the leaders. These are the leaders at the moment. And leading in, in regards to what, that they are doing it or that they are more creative or um, speeds of, of recycling? About the whole process, I would say. it's um, They use their own MRO to remove the value parts and um, then they dismantle the plain um, environmental friendly. Most of them do, um, some with us like um, Singapore Airlines, for example. Um, yeah, I think they are they are the most um, enhanced at the moment. These three. Are there any further questions from the audience? Um, Daniel, I just uh, posted a link for the Emirates one, which Sven already said wasn't done with them. Uh, but that's an example of uh, upcycling and uh, we're taking pre-orders at the moment. Um, so, but that's some, just something that's been recently announced uh, and uh, various part of the aircraft would be then available for, um, for sale. Like the onboard um, uh, um, yeah, I was just bringing that up. Where is the bar? Yeah, exactly. The onboard bar. <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> going to talk about. I think there'll be a big demand for that one, for sure. For the bar? Yeah, yeah. We had some yeah. requests for that previously. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, but um, I mean, um, it's it's very nice that you're that. I mean, we proposed that like one and a half years ago. Um, so it's very nice you're following that. I really appreciate that because it's the right way. We think it's the right way. Uh, especially the watch is very nice. I like that one. And um, the windows. Everyone would like to have an A380 window at home, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, I don't know whether it's known to the, let's say, aviation geek that uh, something like this is available. Yeah? Sometimes you see that um, a restaurant is built out of the entire... Um, let's say cabin um, of an mm. aircraft, or you, you have these typical um, service cards, uh, which are used in, in kitchen and so on. But um, I've never heard that somebody has uh, a recycled part and is using it in his kitchen or something. Yeah? So that's why um, mm. hopefully after this presentation, things will change in a better way. Yeah, we did some interesting stuff. We did some I can share that in a different presentation. Uh, we did some furniture. We did some um, dine. We did a dining table from the entry door, which is pretty impressive. Like you, we all know the entry door, and we made a table from it, a dining table with a glass platform on top, 
which is very neat. Uh, we made some small coffee tables from, um, from, from smaller doors. So there's a lot of things you can do from it, especially if it's a special plane like the A380 and everyone is uh, you know, keen to get a part of it. So, so was the MD-11. I mean, that was sold like, like the German would say, like fresh bun, like fresh buns. <laughs> it was really fast sold. And um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, there are so many aviation geeks around the world that are looking to have some parts at home. Might it be, um, I don't know, uh, the yokes? Uh, might it be um, jump seat? Um, what, what we see, especially with the with the shoes and the bags is that these are collector items so they are not really used like every day i can give you an example because i'm using it every day so this is this is actually a bag we made from etihad seat cover here that's a backpack you can see the pattern here from from etihad um, we use the belt here with a buckle to close it here on the back side is the other belt just to carry it. It's a very neat one, and you know, it's a, it's a it's it's an interesting way. That's the that's the one we do have. Uh, Etihad shoes with Nike. That's a nice one. <laughs> we do have the one that is more looking like the typical um, shopper bag, also from Etihad, also using this buckle here and the seat belts to carry it so finally i uh, finally and now we come exactly to the real reason why we have ladies beyond ah, flying that we are ah, talking about fashion and hopefully, me. Okay. exactly exactly <laughs> now actually i have to say i'm more the i'm more the the shoe geek than my wife so i that's the that's the one from uh, from lufthansa seat leather mm. So I'm fascinated. Where are these for sale? Who do you sell uh, them to? We did 12 sample pairs um, just as a showcase. We auctioned one for a good cause last year. I can send you the link mm -hmm. later if you want. Um, oh, yeah. it, was, it was sold for $12,000 or something like that. So these are really collector items. We don't, it's not a mass production. It's really okay. something for collectors. Oh, wow. Mm. We have a special bag coming. I, it should be ready in, in two days for a 50 years anniversary. Um, but unfortunately, because of the COVID, everything is pretty much delayed. So uh, we have to give it um, to the market next year. I didn't even receive the, the sample piece, but it's looking a little bit like, um, like a Louis Vuitton weekender, but with the 50 years anniversary. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And with the 50 years anniversary um, logo on it. So for this one, we made 50 pieces for 50 years, 50 pieces, and then we're going to give it away to um, to rule to rule a family and to some of the local guys. So yeah, we hope in future we can work with um, with more airlines. I mean, like I don't know how many how many seats um, is Etihad uh, is uh, Emirates currently um, has Emirates uh, Emirates currently in stock. What do you think? How many seats? 10,000. Oh, we have someone from Emirates, so we can ask her. <laughs> in in, in MRO, uh, sorry, or in airplane? Sorry. No, in storage. In storage. Uh, storage. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> he's, he's about right. Daniel's about right. 1,000? Oh, okay. 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 It's a lot. Yeah, you are on MRO, so yeah, yeah. So everything is in house, yes. Exactly. And, you know, um, the, the, the seat cover is one of the parts that is um, that is um, removed mostly in a plane, one of the most removed parts besides some some locker locks and overhead bin stuff, you know, and um, usually the airline simply going to throw them away. But there is a better way to treat it, like as I just showed. And that's something we want to we want to implement as the next step. Maybe Emirates will oh, think yeah. about it. At the <laughs> edge, show, Falcon was also showing like bags from the seat back covers and yeah. uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So they had some samples there at the air show this time. But you didn't do it? Um, um, 
in the um, in what has been circulated so far, uh, I didn't mm-hmm. see any pictures, but I've seen it at the air show. And I think at the moment it's for pre-order, so everything hasn't come out as a list or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering whether it's going to be like a closed uh, sale or whether anything would come on the Emirates official store later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we spoke about that with um, Ahmed Safa already. So, and Mr. Al Reda. So, it's it's a it's a smart move. It's it's very nice. And I would I would personally buy one, of course. I'm a big yeah. fan of Emirates. Yeah, I mean the geeks and employees. You know, uh, anybody in airline the airline world would jump uh, and like Anne was saying and happily buy these things for sure. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing me as a geek. (laughs) (laughs) I think we all are. (laughs) That's the biggest issue in my household because everything is full of airplane parts, everything, everywhere. And so the garage, the garden, uh, the basement, everything. And, you know, you can imagine what my wife says about that. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) no, but that was a fantastic presentation. I think it was opening the eyes for. Uh, a certain topic where people, I think, would never believe that they can get shoes out of aircraft parts. Mm. So uh, potentially, after posting this in YouTube, you will get a lot of orders, uh, not only from ladies beyond flying, but from world uh, aviation geeks. And then hopefully you can uh, provide uh, the material and have a good supply chain management. Yeah, hopefully, yes. When you recycle um, this... Um, the items that are created, does it have to be back by the airline or do you get to sell them at all? Um, we can do both. I mean, okay. we can we can do we can do the production for the airline and they're going to distribute it. Or we did this do the distribution. That's I mean, both is fine for us. OK. So do you have like an online store from where people can buy stuff from different airlines? Yeah. Usually it's it's sold out before we even do it. So we send the renderings to the airline and they were like, okay, we want that. And then they give it to the to their employees. And there is no no you know Nothing. There, yeah. there's millions, millions of aviation geeks out there, but the the material we all know. I mean the plane looks big, but in 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 fact, if you crumble it down, it's just a small piece. You know, it's just a flying cigar. So there's not too much in there. I mean, the material is is very, very small. Um, so, for example, to make one bag, we need two seat covers. So imagine the A380 with 500 and something seats. This will give 200, 200 maybe 250 um, bags. Yeah, 250. Yeah. Imagine Emirates has 30,000 employees at the moment, right? So 75. Yeah, Emirates and Nata together. Yeah. And the Nata. Yeah. Okay. So. Imagine there, there is nothing left. There is nothing left for public. <laughs> Maybe a few, you know. Yeah. Okay. But there uh, are so many other cool stuff you can do. I love, for example, I love the Emirates Lounge. I love it. It's it's perfect um, when you're traveling, and I love um, the the airport in Dubai is one of the most comfortable airports in the world. I have to say. So when you're frequent flyer, it takes you 15 minutes from the aircraft to your car. Um, this is unbelievable it's amazing and the same when when you board the plane it's like maybe 30 minutes you know going through all the process and everything so it's very very comfortable but the lounge in my in my opinion is missing some additional um um, emirates branding and you know parts from the airplane we did that in bangkok with um, some parts of of aircraft for the lounge there that's very very interesting and um, of course, this um, you c- you could put that a little, maybe even on on an interactive level. I mean, now with the pandemic, it's a little bit complicated, you know, to have to touch some stuff and you know give them you know the the, the passenger a little bit more inside what's happening in the plane. But that would be something um, I would um, put into into the lounge. But just saying, maybe. Yeah, it would make it more interesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Elaine, Sophie, Vandana, Christine, do we have maybe a question? No question. 
So Good. if there's any question, just send me an email or whatever. So or Daniel and he will connect us. That's fine. And just a point that I'm sorry, I'm not able to uh, open my uh, just enable my video. It's some problem with my camera. Actually, knew that you could uh, reuse the engines and all the stuff, but it was really interesting to know that you had all these interesting goodies too. And there is more. There's more things to come. We are working um, at the moment um, on um, on some additional, I would say, surprises. Um, we are next year. We're gonna have the first real aviator watch coming, made from aircraft metals. So this is the next step in recycling, and um, th there is many more to come. If you be, as Daniel said, if you be a little bit um, creative, um, you can recycle everything from a plane. I think that was a perfect bridge. Uh, there is many more to come uh, because we have uh, already the next guest speaker lined up. And it's fantastic that we are already fully booked till May next year because we have um, next December, which is in two weeks time, uh, another a male guest speaker, uh, Björn, is uh, talking about his initiative uh, within the Lufthansa Group. Then we start the new year with the chief commercial officer of Sun Express, who wants to discuss three questions which need answers. So I think that's a very thrilling uh, presentation. Then we have uh, Maya from JetBlue talking about the launch of a transatlantic route during the pandemic. Uh, we continue then in March uh, with the Chief Information Digital Officer from Latam Airlines Group, um, how she sees the business transformation and digitization um, in her region, the main objectives and possibilities. We then have a special topic on Africa in April. Ada Funke from IETA is talking about challenges and opportunities in the African aviation. And then in May, we have a low-cost uh, airline representative from Play Air, Raquel is talking about the net zero uh, target uh, in the low cost airlines environment. So I think we have really interesting topics and I hope you all join us for these phenomenal aviation women panel uh, discussions uh, from December 2021 to May 22. And I'm already checking with other uh, aviation leader for the upcoming months. So I hope you had a good time today. Thank you very much again, um, Sven Daniel, for this fantastic presentation. I believe you are going to get a lot of requests now from Ladies Beyond Flying, especially on the shoes, because I know ladies like yeah. shoes, but I also like uh, shoes, so I will also drop you a line. Uh, and then I'm looking forward uh, to have you with us soon again. So please stay healthy and safe. And thank you again for your presentation. Talk to you soon again. Bye bye. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.